on today's show, we'll be looking at the TFSA Contribution Room Hack. So grab yourself a brew and let's start right now. Under changes from year to year, a lot of people are thinking about their New Year's resolutions or they're thinking about, oh, which party should I go to this time? Me, on the other hand, I like to think about my TFSA because at the beginning of each year, that's when I get my new contribution room. And I also get back any contribution room owed from transactions that I may have done in the previous year. We're going to get to all of that in this video. I think the best place to start is let's just explain a tiny bit about the TFSA in general. General. So your TFSA, that's your tax-free savings account, it was an account created by legislation. Well, it was created in 2008, but it became live on the 1st of January 2009. The whole idea was to create an account that would encourage Canadians to save and invest. By making it tax-free, that was the encouragement or the carrot. <laughs> it is a fantastic account. I absolutely love the TFSA. I cannot say enough about it. So back in 2009, the account was provided an initial amount of $5,000 as your contribution room, meaning that you could invest or save up to $5,000 in your TFSA and pay no taxes on it. Now with each new year, you would be given an additional amount of space. So in 2010, for example, it was $5,000 again. So your initial space of $5,000 was added to the new $5,000 space, creating $10,000 of space. So you had a $10,000 contribution room back in 2010. If you carry this all the way forward to 2022, well, your contribution room could be as high as $81,500. Now that's the base amount, and I'll explain what I mean by that in just a moment. You needed to be 18 or older to take advantage of your TFSA contribution room, so you wouldn't receive it. If you just turned 18 this year, you're just going to have that $6,000 at the beginning of uh, 2022. Before we get into dealing with the actual contribution room size, we should talk a tiny bit about how the withdrawals work on the TFSA. So you can withdraw from your TFSA at any time with absolutely no penalties. However, let's go back to 2010 when we had a $10,000 contribution room and let's say we had $10,000 in our TFSA. So if in October of 2010 we withdrew the full $10,000, our contribution room would be zero. We would have no room left until we got to 2011. So January 1st in 2011, we would get back that $10,000 we spent, plus we would get the new room of an additional $5,000. So we would end up with $15,000 of contribution room. So that's kind of cool. So anything you do withdraw, you get that space back. That is a huge plus of the TFSA over the RRSP. Because with the RRSP, if you were to withdraw 10,000 from that, you would lose that contribution room room in your RRSP forever. It's just simply gone. Plus you would pay taxes on that amount as well. So the TFSA certainly has benefits over the RRSP when it comes to being able to move money. Let's talk a little bit about how you can do a TFSA. So if your TFSA, let's say you opened it with a bank. For our example, we're just going to assume that it's 2010 again. We're back in 2010. We have a contribution room of $10,000, 5,000 both years. And we put that $10,000 in with Scotiabank in their TFSA as cash. Well, they have an interest rate of 0.1%. So over that year, when we hit the end of the year, we would receive, we would receive $10 in interest. It's not a great interest rate. And that's why you should be investing. And we're gonna talk about investing in just a second. So in this case, you're gonna have $10,000 and $10. So $10,000 and $10 sitting in your TFSA. So that $10 interest payment grew your TFSA contribution limit by $10. You then get your additional $5,000. So your TFSA contribution room is $15,010. So if you were to withdraw that $15,010, then the following January, you would get back $15,010 in contribution room plus your new amount, an additional $5,000. So that is very, very cool. Here's why you don't want to do that, because $10 is an terrible return on investment. Uh, it doesn't even come close to scratching the back of inflation. So what you really want to do is you want to put investments in your TFSA. So if, for example, you put an investment in with a ROI of 8%, so an 8% return on your investment, so the same 10,000, 8% for one year, means that your TFSA would then have 10,000 
$800. And after you added the 5,000, you would have $15,800. And you would have a considerable amount more than $10 and that $800 would grow your contribution room. So you can see from these two examples, in one example, we grew our contribution room an additional $10 from the maximum, and in the investment, we grew it 8%, so $800. That's kind of the basis for how we can look at growing our TFSA contribution room. TFSA contribution room will grow or shrink with your return on investment. So that's something you want to keep in mind. So let's say you made a bad investment in your TFSA. You, in, you invested in a company that completely went bankrupt and absolutely cratered to zero and you put your $10,000 into that. Well, that's your contribution room gone. So your 10,000 grew down to zero. Your contribution room is now zero. You'd still get your 5,000 at the beginning of 2011 and you would only have a $5,000 contribution room. Now that's a drastic example. It can happen. Hopefully it doesn't happen to you. And it's one of the reasons you always should do your due diligence. But I'm using that example to illustrate extreme caution when trying to hack your, your TFSA contribution room limits. Because if things go wrong, you can lose contribution room. You can lose a lot of contribution room. And you don't want to see that happen. I don't want to see that happen to you. We have three different versions of the hack that we're going to discuss here. So the first one is I like to call it my less risky hack. And why is it less risky? Because you are going to be growing your TFSA contribution room at a slower rate, but a very, very safe rate. So in this case here, you're going to be investing in two different types of stock. You'll be investing in your solid blue chip stocks. So your blue chip growth as well as your blue chip dividend stocks. Some of the best stocks for the safe method is actually uh, your bank stocks. Your bank stocks have a healthy amount of growth to them, and they also have a half decent good amount of dividend payments as well, because those dividends, they increase your contribution room. So they help as well. So you can definitely get some solid growth out of stocks like that, but you're not gonna be looking for your low cap rising star stocks because they're just far too risky. You're going to be looking at blue chip all the way as you make sure that you are not taking any risks with your TFSA. You're gonna grow it. You're going to grow that contribution room. You're going to take the safer route every time because that's, that makes sense. And that is the safest way to go. And usually, once again, this comes down to a lot of times it comes down to age. The older you are, the safer you want to play it because you don't have the time to recover from mistakes. Simple as that. Now, another version is our riskier version. In the riskier version of the TFSA uh, contribution room hack, what you're doing is you are looking for those stocks that are exploding and you're buying them, you're putting them in your TFSA, you are riding them up and you are getting out before, uh, hopefully just before they peak. So that way there, you're not losing anything and you're just basically doing this over and over again. And what that's doing is it's actually pumping the size of your TFSA. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now here's the problem with the risky version. I'm going to be very straight. You're kind of creating a bubble of a sort because you are bubbling and you are ballooning your TFSA up, but it's really easy when you're doing it this way to lose focus on what you're trying to accomplish and to get over greedy. And when you get too greedy, you start to make bad decisions. And next thing you know, your trades are not going in your direction. Your TFSA starts shrinking and that's something you don't want to do. Now, there's a third way. That third way is more of a hybrid. So the way I would run the third way is I would take half of my stocks in my TFSA. So half of my TFSA would be reserved for my blue chip solid companies. So your blue chip growth, your blue chip dividends, get them in there, get them earning, get them growing. Then with the other half or less, depending on how risky or not risky you wish to be, those are the ones that you can start looking at putting some into some of your higher growth stocks, into your more volatile stock, ride them up, get out, then take the profits. If you jump on the train and the train gets you there all of a sudden, all of a sudden your blue chip solid half may only be 40% because of the gains you made on the other side. So then take that additional 10% from the other side and move it over to the solid side. So you're gonna keep moving things over to the solid so you always have that solid base and you wanna be paying attention, you wanna be approaching it with a strategy, not letting your greed let you make bad decisions as you pump that all up. And that can be in a very effective way to grow that TFSA 
bigger and bigger and bigger. There are people who have very big TFSAs. They got in on some of the um, some of the stocks like Amazon when they were young. Threw them in their TFSA, and of course Amazon has exploded. Shopify is another company that has exploded. So some of these companies, if you get on the right company, you can really, really grow your TFSA. So even though the normal limit right now is just over eighty thousand, you could easily have a TFSA of a million dollars if you play your cards right. You want to use extreme caution when you're playing with this hack. I cannot express that enough because there is risk involved and losing part of your TFSA is not a very good consequence if things go wrong. I am not a financial advisor, so you want to be doing your due diligence, you want to be researching it, and you want to be talking to your financial advisor before you make any big investment changes. So keep in mind too that your TFSA is the best place for dividend stocks. So a lot of your blue chip dividend stocks you want to be in there. So in a sense, you almost have to go with the hybrid method for that simple reason because you don't want to be paying um, taxes on your dividends. Even though there is a, a Canadian dividend tax credit, so you're paying less taxes than normal income with Canadian dividend. Uh, still, no taxes is much better. The other big thing that you want to be keeping aware of is when you're playing games with your TFSA, you want to be clear of a few different things. One, you can't be day trading. So when it comes to using a hack like this, you're not looking for companies that you can just jump on and flip like in a day. You're looking for companies that have a solid growth that you can perhaps stay into for 30, 40 days and ride them up while a market is looking good. So you want to be very careful because you can't day trade in your TFSA. So that's one. The other is you want to pay attention to that contribution limit because if you're starting to pull things out and you're starting to move things around, you don't want to get into a situation where you have over contributed because when you make an over contribution for that month, they will take your highest balance you've had in that month and they will charge you 1% of that balance as a fee for being over contributed. So you want to be careful. So for example, back when we had $10,000 in 2010, if we pulled that whole 10,000 out and then went and put it back in early, we would be paying 1% of that $10,000. So we would be paying $100 for that. That's what it would cost us. So that's one of those reasons you wanna really be paying attention to what you're doing when it comes to your TFSA contribution room because you don't wanna be paying fees. You wanna be careful. You wanna be doing all your due diligence and you wanna be, well, you wanna be making money. That's what we're all here for. And the TFSA is a fantastic tool for that. Okay, so if you liked what you heard in this video, click that like button. If you want to see more like it, then definitely smash the subscribe button and hit the little bell so you know when I post a new video. Until next time, I will bid you a fun to do.